Hey everybody and welcome back to Tech Progress. Today I got a special treat for you, an actual tech video, not just me talking about myself. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the Radeon RX Vega 64, um, AMD's flagship from last year. I've owned this card for about a year now and uh, I've had it sitting in my cold water Ryzen PC um, and I had a EK water block on it. Uh, this card is phenomenal and it runs great underwater. And I never really used it much under air. So basically what I want to do is I want to test to see is it actually worth it to water cool your Vega. Um, I know Vegas are uh, getting a little older now, but they are uh, very cheap on eBay. Uh, you can even get some new deals uh, cheap. Um, water blocks uh, you can get fairly cheap. So I want to basically test to see if it's worth it to... Um, worth it to convert your uh, Vega from air to water. Um, there are going to be some obvious trade-offs. Uh, you're going to get better audio, better aesthetics, but um, let's see what the performance difference, difference is. And basically what I did is um, I, I used the latest driver that was compatible with uh, both the air and the water-cooled. Some of the newer AMD drivers, I did have an issue um, uh, actually having uh, Wattman um, obey the settings that I'm putting into it. So uh, I went back to a release from around February that uh, actually worked really solid for me. So, um, and what I did is I went for consistent clocks. I'm not going for maximum clocks or highest performance. I'm going for consistent clocks. So I wanted my uh, water cooled uh, to be as consistent as I could be and it got it to around uh, 1700 megahertz where it never dropped below during any testing and I got the air to go about 1600 megahertz uh, never drop below uh, that was using a little bit of undervolting um, so basically I did uh, I, I, I gave the air and the water both the benefit of the doubt and allowed them to give me the best performance possible so basically what I'm going to do is uh, I, I did not take any video of the EK water block installed in the machine. Um, but what I did do is I, I did record when I removed it. I record the disassembly of the block. I record the reassembly with the air cooler. So you could use this as a guide for repasting your GPU. Um, if you have a, a Vega 64 with a water block on it, you know, say you want to sell it and you want to uh, go back to air or something, uh, you can use this as a tutorial to go ahead and do that. Um, so, okay, let's get into it. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the teardown and reassembly of the card. I'm going to show you the um, uh, benchmarks uh, that uh, I took. I basically took a fire strike and a time spy on both. Um, I didn't have time to do a lot of benchmark testing on it, but I just want to get a general idea of the performance difference. Um, and I'll give you a sound test. Um, so basically, uh, I have three sound clips. One of them is of the PC totally on water, including the Vega water block silent. Then I have a sound clip of running full tilt, running uh, the Fire Strike benchmark. And then I have on uh, water, and you can hear the coil whine that is usually involved with the uh, EK water block on the Vega card. And then I have the Vega on air doing the same fire strike test, but you can hear the sound difference. Uh, and believe me, it is a big difference. So anyway, let's get into it. I'll show you the, uh, what I I'll show you what I accomplished with this uh, testing. And uh, then we will, uh, I'll come back and I'll give you a quick recap. So here you go. Enjoy.
Okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that quick video. Um, basically, as you can see, there's about a 5% difference between the two. Um, and yes, the Vega is very loud. Yes, you can turn the fan down and set a lower maximum fan speed to quiet it down. No, you will not get consistent uh, 1600 megahertz clocks while gaming or running benchmarks um, with the reference air cooler unless it's maxed out or very close to being maxed out. Um, now, if the noise is something you can stand, if you wear headphones while you're gaming, or um, if you uh, if you just don't care about noise, then uh, I don't think it's worth it to water cool the Vega. But um, after using it for a year, and someone like me, I can't stand noise. That's why I did build a water cooled PC. Um, Basically, the aesthetics of it, if you have your PC sitting on your desk and you want to uh, make it look beautiful and make it look really cool, if you like the look of the RGB water block versus this reference brick, um, and if you like the silent mode um, where you have completely silent operation other than a little bit of coil wine, then um, the AK water block is definitely recommended. If your PC is... Um, like I say, if you don't care about noise, then you're not getting much of a performance gain out of Vega. You're getting a little bit more stable clocks. I did have it running at one point upwards of 1750 megahertz, 1100 on the memory, and uh, it was it was fairly stable that way. It did go down into the next power state um, sometimes uh, while gaming or benchmarking, but uh, it, it was rare. I did find the settings that I use today um, were very consistent. It never dropped below like $16.99 on water and it never dropped below like $15.99 on air. In fact, I don't think it ever dropped below 1600 megahertz on air um, with the settings I had. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please, if you did enjoy this content and you'd like to see more, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, uh, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when I do have a new video out. And uh, I hope to make some more content for you soon. I have quite a few ideas. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking out my video. I appreciate it. You guys uh, take care and I'll see you in the next video.